Hi, um, today I want to do a, another foundation review uh, demo video. This is not a first impression video because I've had this foundation for a while now and it's not a new foundation anymore um, because there are a whole bunch of new drugstores com foundations coming out now and I still haven't picked up any um, mainly because I'm uh, I'm gonna show you the one that I've been using and I really like it and I just kind of like contemplating on whether or not I'm going to try any other ones um, but I've heard some good well, good you know reviews on the newer foundations nowadays but today I just want to review the um, Maybelline Dream Wonder Fluid Touch Foundation and this has um, SPF 20 inside so it's in this really pretty um, glass teardrop shaped bottle and I'm in the shade 20 classic ivory I first thought that this um, color is gonna be like too light for me um, but as you can see like in the winter time um, I don't have a tan on my face anymore and I just have a lot of redness and then also I'm looking for something that's not super matte um, because my skin is not um, you know that oily compared to summertime I do have combination to oily t-zone but the t-zone area is not as oily as summertime and then my cheeks tend to get drier in the winter time so I really don't want something that's super matte um, and uh, I've actually tried some samples of similar foundations to this one such you know way high-end brands such as the YSL um, the I think that was the fusion ink uh, foundation I didn't like that one and then I also tried samples of the Lancome Lancome also has a version of this uh, which I think it's pretty nice but it's way pricier and this is actually a really nice drugstore uh, kind of a dupe or drugstore drug version of these um, serum like thin liquidy uh, melting to skin like n next to nothing type of uh, liquid foundation it is very runny it is the consistency is very thin for this con uh, foundation um, and then the applicator is kind of strange um, because the I think the YSL one and the um, Lancome one, they all have like a drop applicator or even the bare mineral one, I think they all have drop applicator. And the uh, classic ivory, I thought it's gonna be really pale because it has ivory, you know, in the name, but um, I didn't know what to, um, what shade to choose since um, you can kind of see the foundation in the, you know, since it's a glass jar, you can kind of see the foundation. Um, on the side and on the bottom because it's more like a gradient kind of look um, so I actually um, when I was in the you know in the store um, I forgot if I got this from CVS or do I read um, but um, I wasn't sure which shade to pick from because I don't really have much of Maybelline foundations I think the only one I have from Maybelline foundation is the uh, anti-shine you know the stick foundation so I totally you know blanked out I didn't know what to get and I can't you can't really test these in the store so I picked up the um, my covergirl outlast stay fabulous foundation because I remember the shade I wear um, this one I love um, because it's matte and it stays for a very long time but I only use this in the warmer weather um, since it's like super matte so um, I decided to pick up a bottle from the drugstore and then I just took this shade which is my shade A32 Nude Beige and I just because um, this is a glass jar as well so I can kind of see I can definitely see the color so I took this jar and then just like compare side by side with the Maybelline Dream Wonder foundations and to see which one is the closest just from looking at the bottle um, I think the classic ivory one is the closest however um, nude beige it is more on the beige side so it is a little bit yellower um, than the classic ivory just from looking at the bottle but they are pretty good match just by looking at the bottle from the store that's why I picked up um, classic ivory and I think it's a pretty good match might be just a teeny bit um, paler for me like in the summertime but for now I think it's really good 
So let me just show you, they said that you have to shake this, and I like how this actually has um, SPF. Um, yeah, the CoverGirl also has SPF 20, and this also has SPF 20, so it's always good to have a foundation that has sunscreen. Um, I don't know, unless you don't want a flashback. But I actually wore this the end of the night for New Year's Eve on top of my, I think, BB cream or something. And I didn't get any flashback, like, you know, so in photography. So it's not that bad. I guess maybe SPF 20 is not that high in terms of, like, giving you flashback in, um, you know, flash photography. Either way, um, let me just show you. Um, like I said, it's very thin. Uh, once you pull out the applicator, you can see it's actually quite beigey yellow kind of color. Um, so it's definitely not good for like fair skin. Like if you are fair skin, I'm, I believe they have even lighter colors in this range. So this is not the lightest shade. So don't worry if you're paler than, than me, because this is a bit too yellow for pa even paler, fairer, fairer people. Um, so this is not a drop applicator, it's more just like an applicator which picks up some kind of product so you can't really squeeze it. Basically just pick up some product and I like to put this, roll it um, onto the back of my hand. Um, I've tried this, I've tried to apply this with my finger. I usually do one first and then I'll use a beauty blender. I've tried this with my finger. Um, I like to use a dry beauty blender for this one and I just dab onto this and then I just um, kind of um, dab it all over my skin. The reason why I want to um, do this demo today is because my skin is a little bit worse than usual. So I felt like maybe it's better to show you when my skin is not so good, um, you know, and then you can see the coverage because I have some stubborn, you know, blemishes on that side. Um, so I thought that maybe it would be better to do a video now to show you how much this can cover. I definitely think this is a light coverage foundation, but it's um, kind of buildable. Like if you want to um, just, if you want to, you know, build up a little bit more coverage, I think that going back to um, going back over for the second, whoops, going back over, oh my, sorry, my hair is like really annoying right now. So going back with the second layer, you can actually cover up a little bit more, but I'm just doing one layer on this one side of the face first to show you. Um, it definitely evens out the skin tone with just one application. So I just picked up another, um, another kind of um drop or not really drop just another um time like so i find that i usually need um to apply like i need to pick up like products from the bottle three times in order to cover my entire face um one for one side of face and then the other for the other side and then another one maybe covering the forehead and then also going back to certain spots to um, kind of add more coverage but as you can see it's very very light um, coverage but it gives a really natural finish I think it's kind of like a satin matte it's not like super matte um, like the CoverGirl All Last foundation that I always wear in the summertime, that gives you a really like matte kind of a full, almost like medium to full coverage result. Um, this is just really natural. Um, if you have like extra dry patches, this will pick up that dryness. Um, so like sometimes I will see around my nose area or whatever and gets like dry or maybe some dry patches on my cheeks or underneath my eyes might show up a little bit. So make sure you really moisturize your skin before I apply this. But if you have oily skin, you probably don't have to worry about um, moisturize your skin so much. Um, but definitely prime your skin, I think, will be really nice. But I've tried to apply this with, a, with my finger and... Um, um, I don't know, it applies pretty nice with the fingertips, 
but it gives I think it even more sheer coverage in, than using a sponge. I've tried using a brush, I didn't really like it because the consistency is so thin. I feel like the brush really just soaks up all the product um, instead of like distributing it onto my skin and it just makes me feel like it's not going on too smooth like a little bit streaky so the best result i feel like with this one with this foundation is actually um it's actually just using a sponge either beauty blender or regular sponge um preferably i think dry will be nice i haven't used this with uh with you know with watering it um because i feel like it's already a very light fluid um foundation um, I don't really need to even share it out more. Um, yeah, but I really like how it looks really natural. And then, um, like I said, it does accentuate a little bit of the dryness if you have dry patches. Basically, this is just one layer of my face. And you can see that it evens out my complexion. And it's a pretty good match. Um, the only thing is that it's pretty light coverage so it doesn't really cover up the red, stubborn redness um, um, my two blemish areas and then some of the redness on my cheek area is still kind of peeking through and uh, I also apply a little bit underneath my eyes but it doesn't really cancel out the darkness so you definitely need like a under eye concealer or a corrector for that area um, but I just like how quick and easy this foundation is and the fact that it looks really natural and the wear on this foundation is quite long I've worn this like throughout the whole day like more than eight hours and my skin still looks pretty good maybe just the t-zone area like maybe around my on my nose and then a little bit underneath my chin I might see a little bit like gathering of the foundation that's because um, after eight hours, even though my T zone is not as oily in the winter time um, as in the summertime, um, the oil still can come, come through a little bit. So that kind of um, makes the foundation kind of gather up a little bit, like especially over here if I apply a little bit too much. So just be aware of that if you have oily complexion, definitely powder it or use a blotting paper throughout the day. Um, but it wears throughout the day really natural, just like the first time I put it on, like for the rest of my face. Um, and I like the fact that it's really, it's just like, it feels like I'm not wearing anything because it's super lightweight. And I like the fact that it's non-transferring because... Um, I hate a uh, foundation that transfers, um, yeah, because I've tried some high-end foundations and then they end up like transferring. Do another layer. And I like how this, since this is super lightweight, you can really like build up the coverage. So I tap a little bit there, tap a little bit here, and then I'll probably tap a little bit here where my cheek area gets really red. I'm not saying that you can use this to double it up as a concealer. Um, that's why I like the CoverGirl Outlast foundation because you can actually double up that foundation as a concealer since it's so like it's a medium to full coverage foundation. But like I said, this is more of a light, even like a sheer to light to like slightly medium coverage. Um, I think that if you have really good skin, um, very minimum um, blemishes, very minimum um, flaws of your, on your skin, I think this is a really quick and easy um, foundation because it really it's really fast. This is two layers, um, some kind of like somewhat two layers. Um, it still doesn't cover up the stubborn red um, blemishes, so you definitely need like a heavier, I definitely need a heavier concealer. Uh, I usually use the Urban Decay um, concealer pan, you know, it's like uh, the 24-7 concealer pencil. This is really full, heavy coverage, and it's spot concealing, it's really good, so I just dab a little bit onto the problematic area and um i believe this costs about 10.99 11 10 11 dollars in the drugstore which is 
cheaper, I believe this is cheaper than the CoverGirl Outlast 3-in-1 foundation. Um, I do really like this. I recommend this if you have normal um, skin tone or if you have combination too slightly oily. Um, but if you are either too oily or too dry, just like every other foundation, too oily, too dry, you either use a primer underneath or use a moisturizer underneath or use a powder on top. Um, so yeah, but I think if you have minimum flaws on your skin or if you're just looking for a really quick kind of, um, um, you know, lightweight, um, no mo no makeup makeup kind of look then this is a really good foundation because it's very quick and easy and it's non-transferring which is great and it has sunscreen built in so you don't have to worry about wearing sunscreen even though it's still nice to wear sunscreen underneath um but just saying that if you forget to wear sunscreen this has sunscreen and i like how um this is less than one fluid ounce this only has 0 0.67 fluid ounce so um but you know, a little bit goes a long way. I mean, not a little bit goes a long way, but the fact that this is so thin and liquidy, I feel like um, it's gonna last me for a while. Um, so yeah, um, I definitely like this and I would recommend this if you're a non-fuzz, kind of um, get ready really fast type of person. Um, it just a little bit more coverage than a tinted moisturizer and then also gives you this like satin matte finish. But it's still very natural looking and it looks like it's just your skin like but you know a little bit better because it's like less flaws i guess in the way but it still looks like it's my own natural skin i like how natural it looks you know it just the fact that i think that this is really perfect kind of skin kind of canvas look for the winter time because you don't want a super matte kind of face for the winter time but you also don't want super glowy shiny kind of look so i really like the result as you can see it's very natural like i'm not wearing anything like i woke up like this um something like that so i hope you enjoy this foundation review and demo video um thank you very much for watching and please rate comment and subscribe i'll see you in the next video bye